Good evening, everyone. How's it going, eh? Pastor Peter here with a live online Bible study uh, for this Wednesday evening. Um, uh, yeah, September 9th. Uh, so, just to let you know, this will be the last live online Bible study um, as we are going to be returning uh, to Adult Discipleship and Sunday School in two Sundays. So we're going to get our new uh, ver uh, verses and chapters to study uh, for the week on Sunday, September 13th, and then we get to discuss them in class on the 20th. Therefore, we won't have um, we won't have that um, uh, uh, September 16th. We'll have that um, a live online Bible study. This will be our last one. So uh, this week we are studying uh, Exodus 31, chapter 31, 32, 33, 34, and then Psalm 73 and 74. And I'm pretty sure there was a typo in the bulletin that said 63 instead of 73. So we're in Psalm 73 and 74. Uh, let me have a word of prayer, and then let's get into some of the scriptures this evening. Uh, Father God, you are so good, God. You are glorious, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, Father God. And we give thanks to you, Lord, for what we have in this great good book uh, that you have given us, your word, Heavenly Father, this book of your word. Thank you, Lord, for these lessons, these lifelong lessons that are written here uh, for us to learn. And uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, through this uh, medium, through this uh, uh, video, Heavenly Father, that um, uh, your word is uh, more deeply known to us. Uh, your word becomes uh, truth in our hearts and in our minds, and truth that we speak as well as your children, Heavenly Father. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this time and for everyone who is gathered together to hear uh, your lessons uh, from your holy word uh, at this time. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Exodus 31, 32, 33, 34, Psalm 73, Psalm 74. So, uh, I want to get into Exodus 32. And maybe you might have figured that out. That might be juicy tidbits for me to delve into for this part of our study during the week. Now, reminder, you, uh, I don't need to go through every single verse here of everything that we're reading. You are supposed to be doing that in this inductive Bible study throughout the week. Um, so I'm hitting some highlights here, and I'm just going to concentrate then on, on uh, chapter 32. And um, uh, famous, maybe, uh, well-known, or we've heard it before, this chapter 32, the golden calf. Uh, that's the subtitle the, 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 uh, that I have in my Bible, the NIV, this NIV. Uh, the main title is Breaking the Law. So, so yeah, let's 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 begin. Uh, I'm going to go through this chapter a little bit piece by piece here with some side comments and such. And uh, well, okay. So let me start by. You, you, we know that Moses uh, went up in the mountain, uh, was communing with God 40 days, 40 nights, big clouds, you know, uh, people down at the base of the mountain don't know what's going on, uh, left in Aaron's care, etc., etc. This is where we kind of find ourselves. Uh, Joshua is with Moses. Interesting tidbit, uh, foreshadowing, forecasting into the future. Uh, who? Uh, we know to be the next leader of the people of Israel. Um, anyway, so leading them into the promised land. So here, let's get into uh, 32, chapter 32 here in Exodus. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron, Aaron, Moses' older brother, and they said, Come, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. 
wow, here we are. Uh, 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 impatient, lacking perseverance, uh, afraid, absolutely, when you give them that, afraid, uh, uh, unsure of the situation, um, dealing with God whom they have not seen. So let's let's put this into perspective, uh, Israelite perspective, in context here. How many generations have gone by that the people of Israel were in Egypt under the influence of the Egyptians and, and all of their 227 some odd gods that they cre worship and they create out of with their hands out of stone or whatever. And here, God, the one true God, is leading them, and they can't see him. So there's this column of fire or this column of smoke, but it's not God. Well, that's not what they see. They just see a column of fire and a column of smoke. We're reading into this. We know God is represented by God. So Moses is gone for this huff and long period of time. And he's not coming back. Anxiety, fear, uh, depression at the loss of their leader. Uh, um, Aaron is not the same kind of leader as Moses. Obviously he's influenced by the squeaky wheels, those who complain enough or shout at the loudest or whatever. And, and they're saying, the people are saying to Aaron, make us a god. Or make us gods, as, as it were, plural. Little g, plural. Make us gods. Do we not, do we, <laughs> do they not understand how God works? That God is the creator that humans are not the creators. This <laughs> this part of the lesson is, is for, literally for us right now. Make us gods. We want to have something to see, to put a face on, literally put a face on. Instead of having faith in something that you cannot see. As Martin Luther said, faith is taking a step even before you see the staircase. You might look at King Jr. So here we are. This is the situation that is uh, 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 coming to us right now in the beginning of chapter 32. And this is how Aaron gets himself in trouble. Aaron then answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives and your sons and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. Okay, so do we not remember where this jewelry came from? After the last uh, uh, plague, the death of the firstborn of the uh, Egyptians, what did the what did the, what were the instructions that God gave to the people of Israel as they were leaving? Go to your Egyptian neighbors and ask for all of their awesome stuff. This is that stuff. But what did God, what do you think God intended for them to use this stuff for? Do you think God intended them to use this ornamentation and this jewelry and these precious things and this gold to be melted to make a God with their own hand? I don't think so. So Aaron, 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 here we go. So Aaron instructs them to do this. And, and so all the people uh, took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast it in, and cast it in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. Un. Wow. Forget about what has happened in the recent past. Forget about how you got to this place. Forget about the plagues. Forget about 
crossing the Red Sea through a, because of a God, because of a God you cannot see. No, here, I made this, see this tool, I formed this golden calf thing. No, no, you worship this now because this is now the God that brought you from Egypt. Seriously, seriously, this is literally what happened. This is rife with self-centeredness, rife with fear, rife with uh, uh, um, wanting to have answers that were not forthcoming. And so you make it up for yourself. This is exactly what they did. They made it up for themselves. So do you know why it was a calf? So there's a couple of different, uh, a couple of the gods from Egypt uh, were, were, were heifers or bulls, okay, so bovines. And then this Baal, who the Canaanites uh, uh, worshipped, uh, was also a, a, a bull, so a, a bovine. So it was very common, it was very well known amongst the Israelites, other gods had these shapes. And, uh, and and so that was it made sense to form, you know, a bovine, a calf, into make a god out of a calf, and um, and so they did. Uh, that's this is exactly why it, it was in the shape of a calf. Uh, shape of a calf. These are your gods, of Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, and I'm only in verse 5 right now. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. Here's the calf. This is the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Burnt offerings and fellowship offerings were for God alone. God alone, as he had ordained to them through their leader Moses. And here they're giving them up now to this false thing, this idol, this false God. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. These things are not good. Eat, drink, and revelry. Uh, a, a Baal, a Canaanite uh, god, uh, this, this, this bull, uh, was a god of sexual immorality, uh, and this is exactly what they were practicing now at this time. Uh, they became self-satisfied because they figured out how they could uh, meet the needs, that whatever the needs that they had. They had this golden calf. They did their they did their duty in, in sacrifices, and now everything's all copacetic. They're gonna they're gonna party. They're gonna party like it's 1999. And that's what exactly what they did. This revelry went on. Okay. Uh, then verse 7, The Lord, then the Lord said to Moses, Go down because your people whom you, uh, uh, whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the soup of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods of Israel who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that, I'm, that my anger may burn against them, that I may destroy them, that I will make you into a great nation. Okay, uh, the Lord is pretty darn angry right now. He is upset. This, uh, this you can't. There's no bones about that. You can't misinterpret how upset he is with this. Can you imagine? So quick to turn away from what I have commanded them. This is literally right after he laid out the Ten Commandments. This is what you need to do. Just ten of them to follow me into the promised land. Just and lo and behold don't cast graven images don't make idols with your hands and lo and behold this is exactly what they do and the Lord hears it the Lord sees it of course he does he's omniscient omnipotent and omnipresent and he is upset you know that time uh, when you were a kid and, and, and you 
you, 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 this tension, this palpable tension is in the house, and you know dad is angry, and you have no idea why. This is the kind of intensity that, the, that God is giving off right now, uh, only on a God scale, uh, with, <laughs> with regards to his chosen people. His chosen people who continue to fail him miserably. So, uh, uh, verse 11. But Moses, Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. O Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of Egypt, with the great power, your great power, and the mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them from the face of the earth? That's a really good point. That's a really good point. A million people plus fled Egypt. That's gonna that's gonna make the news cycle for sure by word of mouth. You can guarantee it. And then and then uh, uh, the whole Egyptian army is dead in the Red Sea. And then all of a sudden those million plus people who fled are dead in the mountains because uh, because God was was a little ticked off. <laughs> and they're gonna get it's gonna get back to Egypt and they're gonna Egypt's gonna go. What the world? Why? 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 What was that all about? Good point on Moses' part. Moses is trying to bring the intensity of the Lord down. Calling them his people and pointing out God's mighty works to get his people out of that generational oppression that they were under. He sought the favor of the Lord. Why? So, so um, the Moses says, Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land. I promise them and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Moses, who was a stutterer, brought the Lord back around, simmered him down, and refocused, I'm calling it like refocusing the Lord. Phenomenal relationship that Moses had with God. Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, the Ten Commandments. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. Like God scratched the Ten Commandments with his own finger. Phenomenal. Excellent imagery. So when Joshua, so he's up there with Moses as well, when Joshua, and that's, a, and that's a story in itself, what did Joshua see, what did Joshua hear, what was Joshua part of? Wow! Delve into that on your own. Delve into that on your own. Find out more of what uh, Joshua's role was in this time. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, there is the sound of war in the camp. Okay, so, so the people are, are making revelry. I mean, we already established this. And it's not the good kind of revelry. It is seriously not the good kind of revel, revelry. And so Moses replies to Joshua's question, the statement, says, it is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. It's not got nothing to do with war. It is, it is the sound of singing that I fear. So when Moses approached the camp, uh, he and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned, and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them into pieces at the foot of the mountain. <sighs> uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, we're thinking. So, 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 M Moses calmed God down, but Moses really didn't know what God was talking about. 
God was, there was God had righteous anger. Only God can really have righteous anger, especially when we are disobedient and don't follow Him. Oh, but my goodness, Moses finally sees what the Lord was talking about, and he flies off the handle. He breaks the Ten Commandments where God scratched by his, by his own his own work was on these tablets, and Moses destroys them in his fit of anger, his expression of anger. And, 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 and he took the calf that they had made and burned it in the fire. Then he ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, that's the drinking water that's for the whole encampment, and made the Israelites drink it. That is harsh. Tough. Wow. I'm not sure that would be very comfortable drinking ground up, burnt up, powdered gold and gunk that was also in that fire. Very, very, very distasteful. He said to Aaron, Moses did in verse 21, What did these people do to you that you led them into such great sin? Do you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Eve. Yes, Eve. Eve was influenced by the serpent. Aaron was influenced by the people. Okay? The people wanted Aaron to do what they wanted him to do. The serpent wanted Eve to do what he wanted her to do. Okay, So here we go. Moses is going, Aaron, what do you think? Alright. And now Aaron has to plead his case. You would believe how close to death Aaron literally was in this moment because he was left in charge of the whole encampment. And here, he let this whole encampment go to, to uh, Hades in a handbasket, quite frankly, uh, because of, of their actions uh, and their wrong choices. And he did not encourage them. Aaron did not encourage the people to be patient. Aaron did not encourage... Uh, and exhort the people to, to stay steadfast. Aaron did not uh, 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 give honor and glory to God uh, uh, by helping the people to worship him in their time of need. Aaron failed on multiple, multiple, multiple levels. Aaron did not recognize uh, their discomfort and their push, and he didn't stand up for himself, let alone stand up for God and uh, for God uh, as well. And uh, so, yeah, he's on the hot seat right now. It's amazing. He didn't get thrown into the fire with the bull. So here, here Aaron is trying to plead his case. Do not be angry, my lord, Aaron answered. You know how prone these people are to evil. He's blaming the people. Well, he can blame the people, but he, in the end, made his own choices as leader of these people. He's trying to pass the buck. And this is an extremely human trait. When we don't want to take responsibility for our actions, we do exactly this same thing. We are errands ourselves. They made me do it. How many times do you remember growing up with siblings and, uh, <laughs> and mom yells out and everybody, and mom's angry and, no, no, he made me do it or she made me do it. Yeah, you did it yourself. This is exactly what's going on. So, okay. Verse 23, they said to me, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, whoever has any gold or jewelry, take it off. They have given me the gold. I threw it in the fire, and out came this calf. I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. What happened before, in the beginning of 32? He formed it with a tool. He's not telling the whole truth, which is still a lie. If you exclude the truth, and you're not, just because you don't, Tell a lie doesn't mean you're not telling a lie. Anyways, and out came this calf, verse 25. Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control and so become a laughing stock to their enemies. Literally, this happened again. This happened before. This is now happening again. This massive amount of people moving through the desert is going to be noticed. 
people are going to be watching how they behave themselves. People are going to be watching how they behave themselves. Behaving like like uh, 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 this, uh, behaving in this revelry uh, uh, like uh, unruly children at best, at best, and completely immoral uh, adults at worst. Or there, there probably is worse. But, but this is what they're seeing. They're completely unruly, um, un, uh, um, without proper leadership, without uh, uh, um, uh, uh, perseverance. Uh, just, f just, f just chaos abounds in this, in this, in this instance. And the people groups that they moved through through the desert saw this behavior. People are watching the children of God. So, uh, um, Moses saw that the people were running around. Whoever is, uh, okay, uh, laughing stock to the enemy. So, in verse 26, so he stood at the entrance to the camp and said, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. Now, here we come to a very difficult part of the story. Very difficult to understand, very difficult to comprehend. But it shows the severity of, of following and not following God for these people. I believe so. I believe it really does. So he said to the Levites then, he said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, each man strap a sword to his side, go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. Killing his brother, his friend, and his neighbor. And you know what? They did. And the Levites did as Moses commanded. And that day about 3,000 of the people died. Then Moses said, You have been set apart to the Lord today, for you were against your own sons and brothers, and he has blessed you this day. So for us as Anabaptists and pacifists, this is very extremely difficult to understand how doing this violence gets you a blessing. Okay? Uh, let me put it this way. We have moved on from this style, uh, from this part of faith to, to Jesus Christ. We have moved on because, because we don't have to die for our sins anymore. Because Jesus Christ did all of that for us, none of this has to take place anymore. Just because it did take place in the past does not mean it needs to take place in the future. We have Jesus Christ. None of this has to happen anymore. So, the next day, Moses said to the people, in verse 30, You have committed a great sin, but now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Foreshadowing, people. Foreshadowing. Moses is mimicking what Jesus will do for us in the future. Well, Moses is the future. It's in our past, of course. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold. But now, please forgive their sin. But if you, if, but if not, if you don't forgive their sin, if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. Again, more sacrifice. Moses is willing to sacrifice his place in eternity for these people so the Lord won't be angry. He wants the Lord to forgive them. Sacrifice. The foundation of Christian life, the foundation of Jesus Christ and His work on earth and what He did for each and every one of us. Phenomenal. Moses is mimicking what Jesus will do in His future, well, which is now on path. The Lord replied to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place I spoke of, and my angel will go before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for the sins. And the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. There will always, even though we are forgiven, there will always be consequences to our sinful actions. Moses atoned 
for the people's sins before God. God forgave them, but they still got punished because of what they deserved. There will always be consequences for our actions. There's worse consequences when we don't ask for forgiveness or don't seek forgiveness. Uh, here, uh, there's this quote I wanted to share to sort of pop off. I wrote it down because I didn't remember it right away. Um, but I want to cap off our study uh, here this evening. Uh, let's see. Here it is. Okay. None of us deserve His grace. It's not earned. It's given. The people of Israel earned nothing <laughs> but death according to God's laws at that time. Nothing but death. Moses sacrificed himself or was willing to do so so that the people would be forgiven. He sought their atonement. They still suffered the consequences of their sins even though the Lord had forgiven them. What, is hap what has happened here in this scripture in, chap in chapter 32 is still happening among God's people today. We do not have the faith. We do not have the perseverance. We do not have the strength. We do not have the patience to wait for God to act. Therefore, we try and do it ourselves. And we replace God with whatever else is at hand. This is literally us now in these times. Think about that. This is literally us now in these times, our times, who literally can draw the same conclusions, the same comparisons. We need, we need to be reliant upon God and His strength, not on our strength. We can't do these things by ourselves, but we can do them through the Holy Spirit living in us, God with us, Emmanuel, God with us, the Holy Spirit living in us, using God's power. That is the best way for us to do it. Yeah. We can't earn anything that God gives us. That's all out of His deep abiding love for us, that He gives us this grace, this mercy, through the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. As Moses demonstrated sacrifice. What are we sacrificing for others today? What can we sacrifice? What do you have in your hand to sacrifice so, 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 so that somebody else has the opportunity to know Jesus? This is a grander lesson from this as well. Anyways, we're coming on 33 minutes here. Let me have a word of prayer, then we'll close uh, this session. Father God, you are so good. You are so awesome. Your uh, energy, your passion, your love for us, Lord, is quite evident here in the scriptures. And, and Lord, we <laughs> it's difficult to compare uh, but thank you, God. Thank you, God, for loving us so much, for loving us this much that you gave your one and only Son and sacrificed his life for us, for our sins, Lord. Lord, we cannot and will never, ever be able to repay you, Lord. But, Lord, help us with the presence of your Holy Spirit to learn to graciously accept this gift that you have given us, the gift of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. And help us, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit in us as well to, to share that gift with somebody else who may not know who you are yet. Thank you, God, for these lessons that you've given us uh, through your people, uh, Israel, through the Israelite people wandering through the desert. We pray, Lord, that we don't make these same mistakes as well. Thank you, God, for bringing us here this evening uh, to study and listen to your word. I pray, Lord, uh, your Holy Spirit presence and that the word sinks deep into us and it works with our with the Holy Spirit presence in us. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thanks so much for joining in. God bless you. Have a great uh, rest of your week. And we will see you possibly in person on September 13th, 10 o'clock in the morning. Be prompt. Thanks so much. God bless and take care.